Welcome back in, true believers, if that is who you really are, to another episode of Antiheroes Bar With No Name. I am Avery, and I'll be your bartender today. Or will I? You may be asking yourself, why all the secrecy, the mystery, and the confusion? Well, that's because a secret invasion is upon us. And that begs the question, who can you really trust? Today, you may not even be able to trust the cocktails that I am making, but we will get into that in a little bit. One thing is for certain, you cannot trust the subject matter for today, and that is the scrolls. Who they are, what they are, what they even do. It's a big mystery, and you can't really trust them that well, but we are going to turn them not into a cocktail today, but we are going to adapt them into a technique that will shape shift your cocktails and make them out of this world. So before we get into that, let's go into a little deep dive into the history books about who the scrolls really are, or who they really aren't. So the scrolls would be first introduced in Fantastic Four number two. And in 1961, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, they created the first family of Marvel Comics, the Fantastic Four. And this family would go on to face tons of popular villains, iconic villains, but one of their first was actually the scrolls. It tells the story of a classic space story from the Silver Age, but that's about it. And then nothing really happens with the scrolls until like sometime in the Bronze Age, they kind of got their own solo series. They were part of the Kree Scroll War that we see in like Captain Marvel, but they never really got their shine. They did have a prominent member, a part of the scrolls, which was the Super Scroll, which was actually introduced in the Silver Age as well. Fantastic Four number 18 introduced Clitur, the Super Scroll. And he's actually one of my favorite villains just because he takes on the powers of all four of the Fantastic Four. He has the invisibility of Sue, flexibility of Reed and the hardening of the thing, and he can flame on like the torch. So. He's actually a really dope villain. So yes, yeah, secret invasion, you guessed it. The Scrolls infiltrate Earth in a secret invasion. Written by my, Brian Michael Bendis and drawn by Linnell Yu. But for the most part, the big event happened in 2008. It does span across a bunch of different solo titles like the Avengers, the Mighty Avengers, uh, a bunch of one shots like Deadpool gets his own one shot, stuff like that. But it features the Scrolls and their shape-shifting abilities and they infiltrate Earth through Earth's mightiest heroes. So they take on the, the disguise and they actually take on the powers of all these heroes and they're all going up against each other. It causes a lot of confusion, causes a lot of mistrust, causes a lot of headaches for our Avengers team. So today, in order to shake things up at the bar with no name, pun fully intended, we are going to turn the scrolls and the secret invasion not into an original recipe cocktail, like I have been doing. We're going to turn them into a technique. And I'm going to teach you a technique that you can actually do at home. It's very simple. It requires a little bit of trust. And the results are a shape shifting of your cocktail. It turns into a velvety, silky mouthfeel of a cocktail. So with all that being said, that is the history of the scrolls and the secret invasion. Let's get into the technique, not even the recipe, just the technique. So the technique is actually clarification. Simple, it's really simple, but it does require a little bit of trust, however, because the main ingredient in order to clarify this way through milk punching is none other than whole milk. Yes, whole milk in a cocktail. Yes, whole milk is the only extra ingredient, of course, in addition to the other ingredients that you're gonna make, whatever you're gonna make a cocktail out of. We're gonna make a margarita, so we have a very simple recipe for today. I use whole milk. I think the standard process is to use whole milk just because of its high content of dairy fat. The more dairy fat, the more alcohol soluble it is, essentially, when you're milk washing, fat washing, clarifying a cocktail. Uh, so the higher the dairy fat, it's gonna attach to its like proteins, the whey proteins, and it's gonna curdle up more. And the other factor that it has to do with is the acidity. I know it sounds absolutely disgusting, but it's definitely worth it. And like I said, you need a little bit of trust because you're, you're working with milk and like cocktails like New York Sours and things that have like a citrus element to it. But ultimately we want these milk proteins to curdle up because the alcohol is gonna pass through it. It's going to extract all the ethanol out of the cocktail. It extracts everything but the sweetness. The sweetness remains. So you have at the end product a very smooth, silky cocktail with none of the bite of any cocktail, but it's still the same amount of alcohol content. If you put a four ounce cocktail through a fat wash or a milk wash, it's going to come out as around four ounces. The whole operation of this process, it requires a few household goods. And the only thing you might be have to go out and buy is a funnel. I got this nice little metal funnel. So we're going to use that. 
a cheesecloth or some kind of filtration system, coffee filters actually work best, in my opinion. You're also gonna need two glasses because when you start filtrating it through one of the glasses, it's gonna come out a little murky and then you proceed to pour that back on top of the concoction in order to get all of it through the curds. You're gonna need your whole milk and then obviously your ingredients. So since we're making a pretty simple margarita, let's just go over the ingredients real fast. We're gonna start with some Espelon Blanco tequila, some orange curacao just to add a little bit more liquor and spirit to the mix because it does remove some of that bite from the liquor. Some fresh squeezed lime juice, always squeeze your citrus fresh and some agave syrup. I'm using Herradura's agave syrup. So what you wanna do first is essentially make your cocktail. You can have your whole milk and we'll go over the ratios in a little bit, but just set your whole milk aside and just start making your cocktail as you would. Make sure it's a sour cocktail, citrus cocktail. It works best because the acidity mixes with the milk and produces those curds. But we are gonna make a classic margarita. We're gonna use two ounces of your Blanco tequila. We're gonna do a half ounce of the orange curacao. We're gonna do one ounce of our fresh squeezed lime juice. And we're gonna do a half ounce of our sweetener, which is agave syrup. The sweetener comes out the most after you clarify the cocktail. It's the only thing that doesn't get extracted out. So a little goes a long way with the sweetness in any of the cocktails. You can lower them, you can keep them the same as specs you find online, for instance. But we're gonna be using a half ounce. And don't shake it or mix it with any ice. You don't wanna dilute it at all at this point. You just wanna incorporate the ingredients together before you pour it over your milk. Two important notes. First note, the ratio. You're gonna wanna do a four to one ratio. That is the consensus about what the ratio is. So four ounce cocktail, use one ounce of your whole milk. And you can batch this up, you can make it, size it up, and make it like a big punch bowl kind of cocktail. But just remember, like if you're making 64 ounces, you're gonna do a 16 ounce of whole milk. So you're gonna have your one ounce, pour it in another glass. The next important note that you wanna keep in mind is you wanna put the cocktail into the milk, not the other way around. And that is because we wanna pull as much astringency out of this concoction as possible. And once these two interact, it's instantly gonna to start to curdle. But it does have a slower, more effective curdling process when you put the cocktail into the milk. So we are going to put the cocktail into the milk. So after you have your disgusting scroll-like looking concoction, you're gonna actually wanna probably put it in the fridge for like an hour. Overnight, if you really wanna be patient about it, the more it curdles, the more it's gonna be able to filter properly and you're essentially lagering this concoction. By putting it over the fridge for a little bit, you allow it to do its thing. If you want a more clear result, it's gonna have the same taste result and the mouthfeel result, but if you want a different color result, like a very crystal water-like clear, then I recommend putting it in the fridge. But for our purposes, we are just going to put it right into the filter. So you're gonna grab your filter. You're gonna grab your two glasses, start with one of them. I'm starting with my big mixing glass. I'm gonna put in this Collins glass. You wanna put your filter into the funnel. I'm using a coffee filter. Put a little bit in and then slowly pour the rest over. So just get it working. Don't be nervous. There it goes. All right, just give it a little bit to work with. And then we're slowly gonna pour the rest of it in. So you can see some of the leftover curdles in the glass. It's pretty gross. So for the first 30 seconds or so, even up to a minute, depends on how fast your filtering is going, it's gonna be cloudy. It's gonna be murky. And what this is, is just the initial process happening. But don't worry, it is going to be clear because once it starts coming out clear, you're essentially gonna switch this funnel over to your other glass. That's why you have a secondary glass. And you're gonna pour this cloudy murky mixture back into the filter so that all of it can be filtered out. All you gotta do is wait, you know, just SpongeBob cue card insert here. Six and a half hours late. Come here. While you wait, you can play with your dog. Look at it. So after it's been doing its thing for about a minute, I like to transfer it over to the other glass. And then you take your remaining mixture and you pour that on top. Cody, I know it is nuts. It's a crazy experiment. And that is going to do its thing. I'm gonna come back and we're gonna bottle it up and I'm gonna show you the finished result in the magic of editing. Mm -hmm. When it's done clarifying, you'll end up with a water-like clear color cocktail that has a different mouthfeel and it actually loses its sour bite. So what's left is a sweet, delicious, and unctuous mouthfeel of a cocktail 
of your choosing, essentially. The beautiful thing about clarifying your cocktails through this technique is that they are shelf stable for like life, forever. Like the proteins that they are clarified with allow them to mix with the alcohol and the sours and pretty much protect itself from like microbiomes that would make it go bad, but they don't go bad. They don't go bad ever. So you can just store them, you batch them, keep them in your fridge forever, serve them at parties. So now we have nothing left to do other than the taste test. And we're gonna have Stephanie taste test them because it's a mystery to her. It's not a mystery to me, but I will also be trying them. Grab your appropriate glassware. It's always better to use clear ice when applicable. So freeze your ice, clear it up. There's techniques to clear it up. If you would like to see that in a video as well, I can go over that as well. But I'm gonna be using some clear ice it just makes the clear cocktails look even more clear. We'll start with candidate number one. Candidate number two. We're gonna top this next one with a little club soda. And then lastly, funny enough, number three. I'm excited. So I'm gonna have Steph try these out first. I've already tried them a little bit just to kind of see if I did it right. Uh, but I'm gonna have her try them out. She has no idea what they are, I believe. After, I'm gonna garnish them and that will kind of expose their secret identities. I'm excited. Um, I feel like you should probably try this one first. You're gonna know what it is. Tell me what it, you think it tastes like. And if it doesn't taste like it, we'll edit it out. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No, don't be nervous, just try it. It's probably a little sweet. Oh, interesting. So it's a, tequila? it's a classic cocktail. All three of these are classic cocktails. So what do you think that one would be? It tastes like a margarita. I'm sure I was thinking of like a flavor. There you go. Oh, that was right. So number one, she got that one right. It's gonna be like grape or apple flavored, but I was like, this just tastes like a margarita, like a tequila margarita. Interesting, but it's different, right? It kind of coats your mouth. It's very, like very smooth. You tell me what you think this one is. Mojito? Yeah, just a mojito. Oh. A standard mojito, yeah. What the heck? Oh my god, it's so good. She's two for two, she's two for two. I was actually most worried about that one. Oh! That's so good. <laughs> Last one. I think, I think you'll know what this one is. Three for three. I'm not gonna let you get the chance. That one might be the most interesting. I did not get to try this last one. I gave you a big hint. I gave you a big hint and I said, last but not least, and then I kind of made a look. The last you got it. The la uh, I'm going to get drunk trying to figure it out. It is the last word. You make a last word. Let me try this one. I, I was excited to try this one. Whoa. It's really good. That is crazy. Yeah. I was worried about doing the last word because it's like it shouldn't be messed with, but that makes it way more smooth, right? So now I'm gonna garnish them to make them look pretty and then we will reveal their secret identities. <laughs> there you have it, reveal their secret identities. You have the mojito, you have the margarita and you have the last word with their classic garnishes of course. So I'd like them. Yeah, exactly. But I can't put the garnishes on. You wouldn't have known exactly what they all were. Now I'm going to reveal to her, and we're going to get her genuine reaction uh, to how I actually did this, because she doesn't know. You guys know already, because we already have this part of the video, but she does not know. It's a surprise to her. How I made these is you pour them over whole milk, and you let them curdle. What? So you drank, <laughs> so you drank curdled milk cocktails. That's what gives them the nice, rich, silky mouthfeel. How do you get the milk out? No, the, the, you filter it. So you're filtering it through milk, but it's fil this is all filtered through milk curds. What the It's kind of disgusting. There's a bunch of milk curds in my trash can right now. <laughs> Why was it good? So yes, a uh, secret, not so secret technique anymore for a secret invasion. There you have it. I'm actually really excited for the secret invasion show coming out. It was one of the standouts for me at the Hall H panel I attended last year at San Diego Comic-Con. I try to go to all the Hall H's. It's just such a spectacular experience, just be able to be in that energy. But Secret Invasion, when they showed off the trailer, I was like, 
sign me up. Political thriller in comics, like Winter Soldier is one of my favorite movies, Marvel movies. It's, I mean, it's a political thriller. Twist my arm. So I hope you enjoyed today's secret, very secret happy hour uh, at the Antiheroes Bar With No Name. Uh, be sure to leave a comment down below. Any characters you want to see turn into cocktails, mocktails, or if you want to see me adapt like more techniques or teach you how to do techniques that you can do at home, follow me along on the old socials, Instagram, at Antihero Comics right here. And remember, I am doing a giveaway still. I am giving away the first appearance of him, Adam Warlock, to one lucky, not even subscriber, just one lucky commenter. Just be sure to click that little video up here. Check out the Golden Sovereign. It's another cocktail I made, one of my favorites so far. And all you gotta do is wait till the end, figure out how to comment down below what to comment down below, and you could get, win this. I'm gonna probably end it in a couple weeks, and I'll pick one lucky winner, and I'll send this out to you, free of charge. A nice little Silver Age book for your collection. So remember, love yourselves, love your friends and family, love comics, love cocktails, responsibly. Excelsior, cheers, and until next time, Antihero Comics, Avery, out. Say hello.